Hello and welcome everyone. I welcome you to this course of Cisco AC Zero to Hero. My name is Zubair Altaf Qureshi and in this video we will be discussing about the configuration and working of static routes and default routes on the Cisco AC and we'll be verifying this uh, on the lab that I have and and before that actually I want to talk about the design considerations related to Cisco AC. Where do we place the firewall, whether it should be uh, facing the ISP router, whether it sh should be behind our uh, corporate router, or what are other deployment methods and options that we have. So for that, I will just take out a white screen and my pen. So there are multiple considerations related to the deployment of the Cisco AC or any firewall, uh, which actually comes down to one of the reason that is, are we going to run, run BGP or not? So are we going to run BGP or not? So if you are going to run BGP, the company has decided that on the AC, you are going to run BGP. That means your AC is going to face the public internet and and this IP is going to be the public IP right? provided by your service provider and and that means that you are going to have a BGP relationship with your ISP right and and as you know that BGP consumes a lot of resource so this ASA needs to be uh, hardware wise the superior products from AC. Okay, and plus, you know, uh, the AC is going to do the inspection, handle the inspection, natting and all those stuff, right? On top of doing BGP. So that can be done and, and what you do is then you have the corporate router here and then you can have your uh, distribution switches. Let's say we have a redundant connection. So we have HA setup of our distribution switches. So this is our distribution layer. And then below the distribution layer, we have the access layer. So we can have multiple access switches there, right? So this is one of the designs that we can have. Okay, this is our access layer. And below that you will have your end devices. And the connectivity could be something like this. Right? So these are the connections that are between the so here, so th this 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 means the L3, um, I mean ASA is in the L3 mode, which is also called the routed mode. In this case, you will have a public IP here and a private IP here, and you may be running, say, OSPF here in between them, and you will be distributing the BGP routes in the OSP or OSP into BGP, something like that, right? So you will not actually redistribute BGP into OSPF, rather, you might uh, redistribute a default route, right? default route. So that is the thing. And next can be based on your uh, deployment mode. So as as in, as in uh, Cisco, I say you have two modes, you have the L3 mode and you have the L2 mode. Now, 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 before that, one was uh, from the L3, you have a, a consideration that it will be facing ISP. And another, uh, um, I mean, deployment mode for the L3, three can be that it's not facing the ISP and you're not running the BGP here, not running BGP. That means uh, the AC is, sit, is going to sit behind the uh, company's router that is going to form BGP pairing with the ISP. So this is going to be, be basically, if we think about a uh, Cisco, these are going to be the high-end ISR, ASR, or the iOS XE uh, devices, 
that are going to form, be forming BGP pairing with the ISP, right? So that means here is the public IP and here you have a private IP and, and then you have the, again, the L3 device here, the distribution layer and then the access layer, right? Core distribution access like that. So that is one case where you can run. Now, now this is an L3 again. So this is a private subnet. This is a private subnet. And, and then you are going to run OSPF here or OSPF here, depending on the choice of um, routing protocol. Then then BGP between the uh, this router and the ISP. So that is one um, second case. And the third case can be that you are uh, actually going to implement this ASA in L2 mode. Let me take the pen again. So now what you're going to do is you're going to place this AC in L2 mode. What, is that, what does that mean? That is also called the transparent mode. So in this case, you will not be, uh, I mean, having uh, uh, I mean, two uh, subnets here, you will be having only one subnet, say, kind of this, say, let's, let's have this flash integrate. Okay. And then you will have an IP here and then an IP here, slash 28. Okay, or slash 29, depending. You don't need actually slash, you can go with slash 29, you will have six usable IPs there. And what you do is you assign, uh, say, dot one here and dot two here. And what you need here, as we have SVIs in the switches, you have a uh, same concept of BVI. We will see this when we will do the transparent mode, but you need to assign uh, IP from the same subnet here. So you have an IP here and, and then you can place this AC in between and do the inspection here. So again, you can, uh, I mean, have ACLs here which governs the traffic to and from the uh, corporate network. So this is one aspect where you deploy this in the L2 mode and there's another design consideration or design um, design strategy that I have seen as you have the data center. This is with respect to, I mean, all the vendors. So you have the data center somewhere around the globe. And in the data center, you have the firewall. And under the firewall, you again have your distribution, your access layer for switches for the DC infrastructure. And then this is connected to the ISP cloud, ISP MPLS cloud. And then from here, you have your branch one connectivity. You have your branch two connectivity, the R2 connectivity. And likewise, you can have multiple branches. And they are connected through the MPLS cloud. And what happens is you don't have a local firewall here or here in this, these branches. So what usually happens when you want to go to the internet or the resources in the data center, what you do is you actually go via this MPLS cloud and go to the firewall and there the traffic is inspected and this firewall is actually connected to the internet and then the forwarding happens. Okay, so all the traffic goes through this firewall and the DC. So this is also a case of design. Okay, so that's said and done. Let's clear this. And now let's focus on the routing part of the ASIP. So like all the Cisco ASIP, uh, I mean, Cisco products, uh, routers, and Cisco uh, switches, L3 switches, Cisco ASIP also can do routing. And what is static routing? Just to I mean, have a brief overview, static route, routes are user-defined, manually created routes, as the ASA has full routing capabilities, by default, you can configure the static routing on it. The administrator creates static routes on a Cisco ASA using the route command. The administrator is responsible for creating routes for each network. That is your is in your topology. I mean, this is uh, all the uh, uh, I mean the the lines uh, and the and the uh, uh, points that I'm going to is 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 generic. Uh, to any L3 device, right? If, if a new route is added in your uh, in your network, you would need to go 
and add the route manually on each and every device. That's why we have the dynamic route, routing side. Uh, it is not suitable for a large dynamic route network. In case a route goes down, that route is going to be always there and the traffic will be forwarded to the ASA. And that's why we have the down, dynamic uh, routing uh, protocol, right? And, and the syntax, right? So syntax is quite similar uh, with a slight change. So um, usually in, in the uh, routers, what you do is you say IP route and the destination network say 10, 1, 1, 1, 0 and the subject mask and then the next hop right so in this case say 11 11 1 here what you do is you have the uh, next hop or you can say the exit interface here okay instead uh, instead of the ip you don't have the ip as i said multiple commands on the cisco asa omits ip because asa as a device doesn't support any uh, protocol other than IP. It doesn't support uh, Apple Talk, IPX like that. So you have the route uh, command and then you have the uh, exit interface from where this, this uh, network can be reachable. Okay, and then the subnet mask and uh, as is the next hub. So let's do this on the Cisco SA that we have and I'll tell you the uh, the topology. So what we will do is we have a we will have a static route pointing to this router R1 for all these three networks, and then we will try with a ping from here. Okay, so we'll do the ping and we'll see is it reachable or not. Okay, so let's go to the ASA and see uh, what is the routes that we have. And by default, we will not be able to reach. So I'll try the command show route. Like I have some static routes. Okay. So let me clear these routes. So clear the routes, it's easy, clear, configure, configure, and you say route static, okay? Uh, it should be static, okay, it's not there. So show run route static, if you do, you should see the uh, show run route, and then I want to see with this s include s let's say small s yeah so i can see this so i will add just no to these uh, commands okay and it will go away and the third one i'll configure these route again uh, these were there from the last lab that i was doing so that's why so if i i think that is cls or clr clear screen something like that anyways so let's go and now if i check the route i don't have the route and if i try to ping the uh, uh, uh i mean subnet behind my inside router r1 i'll not be able to reach it so how do i configure a route to reach the inside plan so the command is like route and then i should know from where I can reach this network. So the interface that I should take is the inside and then I will specify the subnet with the mask and the next hop that is going to be my R1 in this case. Okay, so that is done. Now if I do ping the same IP it should be reachable. Likewise, I want to configure the other two. So the other one will be 2.2 .2 and the third one will be 20 20 and okay so here if i go i should be this should be 20 this should be 20 and that's done now let's uh validate all three 10 uh what is this 10 1 1 1 i have 10 1 1 1 and i have 10 to 20 20 20 and 2 2 2 so let's do this on the ac ping 10 uh, I think that is 2 to 1 yeah I have okay there's no 2 2 there is 10 10 10 1 so this will not work but see if you even if you don't have this uh, network right the static route will be there so that's the uh, I mean drawback of your static route so I'll say no to this and the static route will go. 
So now if if I have to reach the 10 route inside 10 10 10 0 255 255 255 0 10 11 11 1 that is the route. So now if I pin 10 10, 10, 1 should be reachable and also the 20, 20, 20, 1. So that is how to do it. So that is the static route. Now, now we will configure, uh, say, uh, say a default route to reach any network out to the uh, internet. So this, this assume that R2 is the internet and we have these networks on the internet. So just a single route to reach anything on the uh, outside. Uh, so the command again is the same route, but the interface will be outside this time. And then as we will do in the router like this and the next hop 192.120.2 is the next hop. I can also do instead of all zeros in a 32 bit, I can also say 00. zero. And if you see the route here, uh, command, it will automatically change this to your 32 bit format. Okay, so now if I try to ping 199.1.1.1, which is sitting behind my um, internet router R2, it's reachable, as well as any other network that is present there, it is reachable. Or, I mean, even, even if I don't have a network that is not reachable uh, behind R2, but ASA going to, uh, is anyways going to send the traffic to R2. So even, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so these are the networks that are present, right? So for example, I can ping, it will be sending this unknown um, uh, subnet traffic to the R2. So that is how it is. And that is how you do the static route and the default route on the Cisco ASA. Uh, I hope you liked this uh, session of Cisco ASA and you, and you understood these concepts clearly, uh, but you need to practice these on your own and you will grasp the concept more clearly after practicing it. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in my next video and we'll be covering the dynamic routing protocols and much more. So stay connected and don't forget to share, comment, like, and do subscribe to my channel. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.